Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, December 25th, 2023. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Howard. Merry Christmas. What'd you do? What'd you get? Anything good? I got a few really interesting items. Like one of them is a balance board. So I guess I'll be learning to balance. <laughs> oh, fitness for fitness. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's fun. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's been Our great team. here in San Diego. Did uh, you get a lot of uh, Chinese food? Yeah, we did some Chinese. We're making some pasta tonight. We've just have been sitting around not only really not uh, enjoying Florida. No gas, no, uh, we're not a gifty type of group of people. Life, life is good. All right, take us through uh, what a year. Yeah, I mean, just incredible considering how much were the indices down the previous year. Like mm -hmm. the QQQ was on what thirty percent in twenty twenty two, even or some of some of the major stocks like full recovery, new all time highs. It was just hit last week. Um, the S and P is not too far behind, and then we're finally seeing small caps and micro caps outperforming, which you know it's a characteristic of a bullish uh, market. Mm -hmm. Last week we saw like a quick. Quick afternoon shakeout, like on Wednesday, like for no reason at all. It was just, I guess, people taking profits and stops getting hit. We had like a pretty significant uh, shakeout on Wednesday, like full recovery in the next uh, couple of days. And I see the more of these shakeouts we see, I think people probably become a little bit more, more careful. And uh, crypto isn't is in complete fire, uh, just seems unstoppable. Uh, I mean, what to us up a thousand percent this year, Bitcoin up 300 percent. Yeah, the, the, the spray scale still this Ethereum is still trading at a discount. Um, yeah, this is longer, longer term, yeah. So, yeah, I really that's why I think Ethereum's kind of lagged itself, but like, uh, Coinbase has always been the trade here. It's gonna, well, Coinbase definitely the leader here in terms of publicly traded stocks, uh, it's still pretty far from its IPOs um, highs. I mean, if you look at it on a weekly basis, like the next potential technical resistance it could be around. But it's kind of like Spotify. I don't think they did a typical IPO, did they? Didn't they just Spotify, do like Spotify? Um, it's a little bit long, longer price history and still... No, but I think they did the same thing. They didn't do a typical IPO. They just took a Dutch oh, option. Just, yeah, I don't remember yeah. uh, about Coinbase. Yeah, which was great for Coinbase. They maximized what the hype was at the moment. So, in all, for all intents and purposes, this is this is really an all time high. Anybody who wanted, I've got out. Like right, with the SEC, I mean, yeah, that's I mean, why it, it was down more than ninety percent. Yeah, but everybody who needed right. to sell sold. Yeah, so this is an Amazon moment. You know, will it? Mark time for a while. I mean, I think the the biggest thing helping crypto right now is that the Fed to stop raising rates, right? Like the dollar's getting weaker. Um, that's good for crypto. Um, and the Fed's going to go into a theoretically a uh, a cutting era. Yeah, again. the Fed year went from five. So you know, the markets are just a little more efficient. You know, front running, and so crypto's having a great run. But again, I, I don't know the fundamentals there other than macro. Um, so yeah, it's risk on. There's the risk on in general. Tends to discounts. You know, in two weeks can discount. You know, the good news for the next two years, and mm -hmm. it often does that. It often uh, overshoots to the upside mm -hmm. to the downside, or just overreacts mm -hmm. to any, uh, any type of news. Um, so other than all like the the crypto related plays, the tiny um Bitcoin crypto miners and blockchain plays, um I mean really almost everything is working. Even um cannabis stocks that's been like the biggest dogs forever, even they woke up on Friday. The difference uh, is there is still got the government, you still can't I mean it's easier to do crypto than it is to be a uh, a weed business so so i think you gotta you know it's fine for people that really understand the industry but man i don't know 
Yeah, I mean, definitely. That if you look at the longer term charts, it's just one of the scariest uh, charts. Yeah, yeah. I think I think this could, you know, I think technically, if risk stays on, healthcare, biotech are going to play catch up. I was seeing another great technical guy that I follow. Yeah, definitely. Um, Biotech's good. Starting to wake up. I'm, I'm on some XBI here uh, for JC and I, but. You know, it's three bad years in a row. If risk is coming on, um, you've got, you know, good crypto. you got a good semi-cycle going. You've got uh, all the sequencing that can happen and the compute power. So I think, you know, I think they're going to be, if, if risk stays on, I think healthcare and biotech stocks kind of will benefit. Let's say IBB, I forget which one's equal weighted. Let me see uh, the weekly and the monthly on that. I yeah. think that's the... IBB is just mo mostly larger. Uh, larger. Um, but really, there's there's that looks a little better longer yeah, term. Yeah. But that's yeah. been going sideways for how many? Yeah, I mean, for a very long time. Uh, it had a big, big rally here from 2011 to uh, 2014 and basically sideways since then. Mm -hmm. the nine years of, of going sideways yeah so i keep an eye on that this year i think we have stocks like you know like illumina or there's Vice. a huge drawdown yeah they're just going sideways or just down a lot um for yeah. a significant amount of time yeah so i'd keep an eye here if stuff starts to break out okay other than that it's the same story semiconductors big cap tech i mean really everything is working except China really right now. So it's uh, China is it just continues to make new lows. It, you know, I mm -hmm. and I see a lot of comments on social media like lately they said, "Oh, January is the strongest month for China." So I guess people still haven't given up on China, but it just keeps making new lows. And I'm not I sure. People won't get it, give up because it's easy to buy exposure, yeah. and it's a big you know because of the population and like. But basically, you're buying the whim of one person. Um, well, yeah, look, is, look at something uh, like Baba. I mean, it's, yeah. it's you're gaming Z, and I don't know. Well, that's just that's just not a system that is conducive to long term investing versus the United States, which is profit driven. You know, story driven, but also profit driven in the U.S. So, you know. Oh, that came back. That was having a great run. So what's the uh, what happened here? That Netis was outperforming, and then on oh, the it's a, week, it's a gaming company. And then on, on Friday they announced that they're going to limit the the screen time for users. Oh. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Like, out of nowhere, you know. I guess there was a warning a couple of weeks back, but geez, that just took one of the better performing Chinese stocks and sunk it. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think they only have, what, BDD that is kind of holding, you know. It, yeah, I, how do you trust that they're not going to curtail stopping? And uh, uh, the educational ones, yeah. Yeah, I still think your best e-commerce, secular trend is e-commerce. So, um, you know, Shopify is still, Shopify still, to me, holding well. is, is holding well. Um, I think Google's, you know, launch of their chat cheap, chat Gemini, is you know it's, it, even through that little correction there this week it just kind of didn't flinch and finally is closing at like weekly highs i don't know is that um is that an all-time high no weekly highs the week highs yeah yeah so i think that's one that i'm watching closely uh and then you know for new positions i'm just pretty long so i'm not looking for new things um unless the setup sort of trade or something fantastic but a lot of speculation it's january there's a lot of people going to be trying to run yeah. out of the gates uh, what do you what does your portfolio look like right now what are you doing so i mean i'm long i'm not super long i'm like like 50 percent long in like longer term swings and the rest i just used to take short-term trades usually one to a few days and what's the hit rate been higher probably the last couple of months i mean very high uh, yeah. basically almost everything uh has been working um yeah. really like you know i mentioned that i i dived into like some of the, some of the uh three times um long etfs like dna and uh, the original banks dpst and huh. 
all of them have had you know pretty significant moves. They've been really the leaders. Uh, like the worst hit sectors from 2022, and well, they're up 100 percent in a month. They, yeah, they've been they've been leading uh, ever since the Fed uh, gave the clue that they're done raising and uh, they're actually looking to probably cut rates next year. So all of those stocks, you know, they were priced for some of them for bankruptcy or almost bankruptcy just because the market was worrying that. They have to raise money at much higher interest rates, and um, uh, some of them might not survive. And it's the same story for biotech, as you mentioned. They're they're in the same group. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, we saw that huge run. And this is why uh, we have some setups like Moderna. You know, yeah, it's written off basically, and mm -hmm. now starting to curl up a little bit. Oh, it's still in a big downtrend, so it's um, yeah. But I'm saying these were. Unlike China, these are American companies that are starting to get written off. And it's rates, I right. think the key is going to be your rates higher for longer or rates, you know, the rates peak out. I have no idea, but, um, you know, the higher for longer thing was happening. Like everybody was committed to the higher for longer interest rates right in November, and that's when they peaked. Um, yeah. You know, um, with two wars going on, rates can't stay up here. So, you know, for now, for now, the coast is still pretty clear until the price action breaks down. Um, yeah. Oil, yeah. I mean, January historically, as you said, the first two to three weeks of January, small caps have been outperforming. Even like in back during the, the Great Depression, in like in 1932, small caps still had a pretty significant rally early in the year. So yeah. I guess a lot of people are positioning for that again um, this year. And, a couple uh, of the people that got this year mostly right. Um, you're you're on a swing trading base, but on a longer term, with just reading price action, where JC, who I do trends with friends with, and Ryan Dietrich, you know, they tend to, you know, they've stuck with their guns here, saying, you know, when you have this much strength a year out, things generally look better, and you know, technically the odds favor you know strength begets more strength. Um, there's tons of money on the sideline. Uh, there's tons of people under invested, and the news is and you can't open that. Yeah, because whether, it's, really whether it's fake news or made up news or you know propaganda or um, everybody's got an angle on that. It's just no good news, and that's just not the way the world is right now. There's plenty of good news, uh, and that's why stocks are, you know climbing this wall of worry. It's a question is where do we rotate next? And uh, you know, it could be healthcare biotech, could just continue to be the same stocks that are working. Yeah, definitely. I think it seems to be biotech and just small caps in general. Uh, yes. As of right now, yeah. Okay, buddy. Well, everybody, Merry Christmas. I'm gonna keep everybody for a long time. Uh, I uh, have a great uh, New Year's. What are you gonna do for New Year's? I'm just staying here in San Diego. Okay, I'm heading back to Phoenix. But uh, we'll see everybody next week. All right. See you next week. Bye.